friends, Grace here. This is just a quick video regarding some interesting updates I came across this morning relating to the great propaganda machine and the minions we call fact checkers. Not too long ago, I did a video on Snopes and it was only a few months ago that Instagram fact checkers totally roasted one of my fully sourced Bill Gates videos for being false. Yet we're still not quite sure what was false about the video because the fact checking website was completely in Greek and authored by someone with a pseudonym. Clearly, I'm not great at hiding how I feel about pay to play fact checkers and while they're pretty low down on the hierarchy of the world's evils, for some reason I can't ever stop myself from making a video about them. Folks who are paid $15 an hour to toe the line, what's wrong with me? I think this creation by Jim Bob pretty much encapsulates the entire situation at hand. The latest update is that Twitter has decided to join in on the fun and they recently confirmed they're working on a new feature for their social media platform called Birdwatch. And essentially, it's a tool that they say would allow the Twitter community to warn one another about misleading tweets that could be seen as harmful. As one checkmark user relayed, Birdwatch would be a moderation tool to monitor the dangerous thing we call fake news or misinformation. Moderators can flag tweets, vote on whether it's misleading, and add a note about the message being relayed underneath the tweet as to why it's misleading. Sort of like what you see the Facebook fact checkers doing. When you go to the tweets drop down menu where you can find the blocking and reporting tools, users will be directed to a screen where they can view the tweet's history of notes. And this is what I found funny. It's been reported that it's unclear whether everyone will be given access to annotate these tweets or only a chosen few will be given this privilege, but I bet you can guess what the answer will be. While Birdwatch is still allegedly in development, of course I have a few questions. The first of which is, how do you measure harm? Are we talking about tweets targeting the well-being of private citizens or are we concerned about tweets that damage the reputation of politicians? corporations in global agendas. Will all anti-government tweets be considered harmful or just anti-government tweets with a certain partisan spin? If I'm picking up what they're putting down here, Twitter essentially is going to allow truth to be defined by a vote. So Twitter will look to the consensus to determine what is true and what is false. What information is harmful and what information is beneficial? Certainly, you can see how the system might be subject to abuse given that political parties and organizations are infamous for their bot farms, where their bot armies spam Twitter with their message to shift public opinion. Could these same bot farms not be utilized to censor information on Twitter through Birdwatch? Furthermore, if only select individuals are allowed to moderate tweets across Twitter, what is the vetting process for these individuals? Part of human nature is having your own belief system that's shaped by your interactions, your values, and personal experiences, and therefore bias is unavoidable. Myself and others have demonstrated how flawed this fact-checking system is. A perfect example of its flawed nature is a recent one. Throughout 2020, Bill Gates, depending on where you're sitting, is the savior of humanity, the world's boogeyman, or perhaps something in between. Regardless of your view of him throughout 2020, Bill Gates has undeniably become the spokesperson for corona, lockdowns, and a cure. Well, not only the spokesperson, but the champion for a cure in the form of a vaccine, one in which he and the rest of the corona ringleaders are financially invested. And the reason why you'll never hear any negative press about him from legacy media is because he literally bankrolls the news. A recent examination of the charitable grants that the Gates Foundation had made through the end of June found more than $250 million going towards journalism. Recipients included the BBC, NBC, Al Jazeera, National Journal, The Guardian, Univision, Medium, and The Financial Times, as well as The Atlantic. PolitiFact and USA Today, which are operated by institutions which have received funds from the Gates Foundation, have even used their fact-checking platforms to defend Gates from false conspiracy theories. And our favorite, misinformation, like the idea that the foundation has financial investments in companies developing COVID vaccines and therapies. In fact, the foundation's website and most recent tax forms clearly show investments in vaccine companies. That's just a single example I'm using, but it demonstrates the problem with these fact-checking farms. The total lack of transparency. 
Do you think PolitiFact and USA Today are disclosing in their articles that they're funded by Gates? No, of course not, yet they're still promoted as the gold standard for truth amongst the herd of sheep. Just like the mainstream journalist and verified checkmark folks on Twitter. The whole Russian election interference story combined with other major stories out of the 2016 news cycle that surrounded the presidential election is what prompted the social media fact-checking phenomenon. The idea that people are too dang stupid to ask questions, freely share information, and decide for themselves what is valid. So ever since then, social media platforms have taken it upon themselves to combat other nations meddling in our elections through the disruption of public conversation on social media. And you know what? I'm sure other nations totally do attempt to sway public opinion through social media. There's no denying it. But the main perpetrators of this, we certainly never hear about because we're not allowed to talk about the people we're not allowed to talk about. But the fact is monopolistic corporations who align themselves with the government like Twitter and Facebook are the largest disruptors of public conversation regarding culture, freedom, and politics on the face of the earth. And hey, look, they're the places that censor information under the guise of fact checking. You know what they say, if it stinks to high heaven, that's probably because it's rotten. What is truth anymore? I don't have a straightforward cookie cutter answer for you, but what I do know is that to find truth or some semblance of it, discussion must be allowed, arguments must be had, and feelings are gonna get hurt. Truth cannot be spoon fed to us like mystery meat by the state, by self-serving individuals who seek to control not only the flow of information, but all of humanity. What do you think, internet friends? In the meantime, there are some nice alternatives to Twitter and Facebook and YouTube like Gab and BitChute, and I only joined Library yesterday, so I don't have an official review for you, but I use them all, all the social media, so I hope to see you there on whichever one, and I also hope you don't mind the short style video for the next couple of videos. I'm currently working on maternity leave videos, so I'll be popping in here and there to check in. Like always, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye!